this is Brother Carly going to do a good job at it. My God. I'm not putting you in the spot, so I hope it's <laughs> Matthew 5:38, it says, Ye have heard that it hath been said, an eye for an eye, and a tooth for a tooth. But I say unto you, and there'd be a lot of toothless people right now, huh? <laughs> but I say unto you that ye resist not evil. But whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also. That's, a, that's hard to swallow. And if any man will sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. Ain't a whole lot of that happening in the church right now. Man, we just, it's not right. We go after them, and we just clean their clock legally because we have the God-given right. We think we have the God-given right. But in all reality, according to the word of God, that's not God's right, God-given right. And whosoever shall compel thee to go to a mile, go with him twain. How many would do that? Give to him that asketh thee, for him that would borrow of thee, turn not thou away. Ye have heard that it has been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that love you. Oh, we got that part down right good, huh? Do good to them that hate you and pray for them that which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your father. Notice this. That ye may be the children of your you have to do all these things that ye may be the children of your father, which is in heaven. For he maketh his son to rise on the evil and on the good and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same. Amen. Brother Sato, if you could pray over the remainder of the service, please. Amen. You may be seated tonight. Tonight, I, I, I want to venture into the area what it means to be Christ-like. Have you ever heard a little kid when, they, when, they're, when they're fighting, and you hear their, their, their teeth grinding, they're like, I'm going to get you. And it's such a hatred, such a hateful look in their eyes. Their fists are clenched. And they're like two years old, three years old, like four or five. You know, it's like, wow, where'd that come from? How many has ever been done wrong? I, I have. How many has ever been cussed out? Cut off on the freeway. I've been cussed out by Christians. I've been cussed out by so-called Christians. Who's been cut off on the freeway? How many has ever uh, been told something and it wasn't true? And you were banking on what they told you and used their information and it disregarded, it, 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 it made your name not good in the conversation because you were using information you thought was correct. As pastor here, I, I've, I've, been, I've been lied to. 
I've watched a lot. I've, I've heard lies come right out of the mouth, out of the mouth, just just fluent, just telling me. I'm like, wow. And I know the whole story as they're telling me this. I usually find there's three sides to the story. Your story, my story, and the truth. Right? But being, be, being Christ-like is, is in, in, in the eyes of the world, apostolics have, have always been known for we wear our sleeves to here, we wear our pants to here, we do this, so women don't do this. And, and, uh, but really, uh, and I believe I, I was talking to a to, uh, man on the phone, and I, I agreed with him. I said, holiness should always be portrayed from the inside out. Holy is, holiness can never be portrayed from the outside in. It has to start. You can't shine a reflection of holiness to the inside. It, the reflection has to go outward. If it's ever going to be the way God intends it to be. But it's easy to, sometimes to follow the standards. Well, it's not easy for everybody. And I, I'm not going to get into that. I'm not talking about standards tonight. Amen. But it's so easy sometimes to follow the standards and pastor, you know, to, you know, as long as I, I look good on the outside, everything must be hunky dory on the inside. Right. If there's a smile on the outside, it means I'm happy. If I'm not chewing into you, it must think everything everything's all right between us no we all battle things in our walk with God we all battle things on a daily basis we are all, we're all faced with things that try the very person that God is trying to form and our old self loves to rise up our old self loves amen to do uh, uh, what feel good feels good to the flesh there's been times uh in my life where i woke up i, I well i'll just i'll just use when i was younger for example uh I, I was i was always pushed around and then one day sister price i woke up and i said you know what it ends now and i went to school looking for a fight i waited for somebody to hit my shoulder the wrong way I waited for somebody to say one cross word because I was prepared to go all the way and get whatever penalty came with it. And I, I had anger. I, I, had, I had things in my life that I had to deal with. And, and I, I had the wrong attitude. And I, I remember God began to deal with me in, 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 in a lot of ways. But in those years or in those months that I, I went to school looking for a fight, I never got into a fight. Nobody ever hit my shoulder. Nobody said one cross thing to me. I don't know if it was because of the, uh, uh, the uh, narrowed pupils that I had when I was walking down the hallway or what it was, but it, nothing ever happened. How many has ever woke up in the morning and said, you know what, I'm just in a bad mood today. I'm ready to get into a conversation with somebody. Oh, I'm the only one? bunch of self-righteous people in here tonight, huh? I, uh-uh, pastor, I never done this. <laughs> but there's a thing that Jesus dealt with, and, and he taught the Beatitudes of how a Christian is supposed to to act. And many people say, well, I don't have to act that way. I'm not the pastor of the church. If you represent Apostolic Lighthouse, amen, you better have the attitude that God wants you to have. Don't be claiming you're a member of this church and going around cussing everybody out and telling everybody where to go and how to get there. Because there might come a day when someone goes, do they go to your church? Yeah, they attend. But that's about it. You want my backing? I got, amen. You got to represent someone that I'm following. You're not representing me. You're representing somebody that I'm following. 
Amen. You're representing Jesus. And the Bible wants us to have the right attitude when we're about, to, amen, uh, our, our, our daily walk. As we started Apostolic Lighthouse, I, 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 I was... Uh, we're in the middle of, of working out some situations and some issues uh, uh, with the district. And I, I, I believe that we kept the right attitude. And I told the church that no matter what people say, no matter what people do, we must have the right attitude. We must have the right spirit. We, we must respond the way that God wants us to respond. Because we're not representing ourselves, but we're representing someone who we follow. How many today would still carry a cross up a hill after you got beat, spit upon, your beard plucked from your face, and a crown of thorns shoved down in, on your head in mockery? Many, many people would walk out and say, I ain't never going to that church again. That's, that's why there's so many... But how many today believe that we must be like Jesus? Even if someone crosses us. I'll even step, take this a step further. Even, if, even when your husband crosses you. Even when your wife crosses you, we wouldn't need all this counseling if people was more like Jesus. It would cut cut out hours, countless hours of of counseling that goes on if people was just more like. Jesus, this one pastor, before he would ever counsel with anybody, he would say, have you prayed about it? And more than just a, now I lay me down to sleep, I pray the Lord my, my soul. And more, more than that kind of, a, but, but a prayer where you got down on your knees and you begin to touch God. And, and if they hadn't prayed that way, he had said, before you talk to me, you need to have that prayer. Half the time, he would never even have to talk the individual. Why? Because I believe the Spirit of God should actually lead a Christian. Right? I, I believe that. That's why we have the Holy Ghost. Amen? That's why we got the Holy Ghost. So why, why people are led away from the church is because they're not praying. Why people get uh, frustrated and depressed and all that, it's because they quit praying. They quit letting the Holy Spirit lead them and guide them into all truth. I, I, I posted on Facebook uh, just before church. I was at the uh, uh, table in the house and, 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 and the thought crossed my mind. I said, crowds ran to Jesus. But when Jesus starts leading, then there was 12. Oh, we love to have the blessings of God. But when Jesus begins to lead us away contrary to our flesh, then there was 12. As we go, th as we go through this, and we all know this is a very popular scripture. I'm not going to go through each scripture tonight. Amen. But the Bible says to pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Thou shalt love thy neighbor. We have that down pat. We love those that are being neighborly. Amen. But do you love, do you pray for those that are despitefully using you? Amen. As we go into this, amen, we, we have to realize that we are not representing our own. But we are representing somebody that is greater than anybody that ever existed. Amen. If we go to Matthew chapter 5 tonight, and I'm gonna, I, I want to go through this. Matthew chapter 5, starting at verse number 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. When he was set, his disciples came unto him. 
And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In the carnal mind, we automatically put blessed right along with wealthy. I don't have anything against that Destiny Christian Center Church or whatever it is. Well, I have some things against it. I do. But I never see one of those bumper stickers on an OG Jeep, old green jalopy, bumper sagging, tailpipe dragging. You know, I, I never see, I never see a bumper sticker on one of their cars. I don't even think they hand it out. You have to have a particular kind of car to get that bumper sticker. Because they are preaching, sowing your seed, and being blessed. That's not why we serve God. Because I believe that someone who drives an old beat-up duster that lives their life according to the Word of God is going to make it to heaven. Just because they don't have the mansion on a hill... Amen. Or a job up in a CEO office uh, does not mean that they're not going to make it into heaven. I believe. Amen. We we uh, uh, this this sow your seed mentality ha ha has gotten a hold of some people, and they think, "Well, I'm just not being blessed if I ain't driving, if I ain't riding, if I ain't living, if I ain't doing how my brother's living." We have to understand that being poor in spirit. Jesus purposed, opened his sermon to let people know that, his, that this gospel was for the rich as it was for the poor. Someone willing to empty their self of worldly wealth. Poor often is showed as someone who is humble and self-denied. Not being above your brother or sister because of a certain position or gift of the spirit you may have. I, I, I don't know. I, 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 there's some people, they begin following people because of gifts of the spirit. My dad had a pastor that there was an evangelist that came through. And all of a sudden, my, my dad's pastor no longer there right now. But that pastor all of a sudden was following this evangelist all over the place. He wasn't even pastoring his own church. He was following this evangelist all over the place. And then I put him on the spot because he came out to California and didn't see me. I said, hey, buddy, I heard you was in California. I heard you was right down the road from me. I would have came and met you. Oh, I was, I was at this conference this day. Be careful. This man right now is no longer pastoring a church. And his soul's in a, in, in a bad state. Be careful what you think you're following. Because we're not following somebody that is in the operation of the gifts of the Spirit. We're not following somebody that knows how to preach a good sermon. We're following Jesus. We're simply living for God just for the salvation of ourselves and for the salvation of others. No other reason. If God never blessed me ever again, in which I know he will, amen, I still am going to live for God. If I live in that double-wide trailer that I have, I love it. If I never own another new car, by the way, I'm not getting another new car. God, God opened the door today. Amen. We're going to have one less car payment. I'm all about simplifying my life. Amen. I'm not here to keep up with nobody. I'm here to make it to heaven. Amen. And I, I'm thankful today that my blessings are not materialistic amen all of my children are filled with the holy ghost baptized in jesus name amen uh, all of my kids are healthy god has been moving on my uh, family in, in in different ways god is leading my children in their own uh, ministry in their own views uh, amen my children will talk to me about things that uh, that they read that they see that they hear amen and how, how how life amen is is not according to the word of god and i'm thankful amen to have children Children, amen, that are hungry after the Spirit of God. 
well, that's because you're the pastor. Oh, no. We all can have our children hungering after the things of God. Blessed are the poor in spirit. Verse 4 says, Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Psalms 34, 18 says, The Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save as such as be of a contrite spirit. Having a godly sorrow and being able to be broken before God and not ashamed to show your godly sorrow. Now there's a, there's a difference. I don't, I don't want you to be just cover yourself in sackcloth and ashes and lay yourself out in front of the door of the church and expect God to be pleased with that. Because now you're doing it for show. But when you find yourself in your prayer closet, here I go, Sister Hope, pray for me. Here I go. I just went there. I'm going there. Facebook blew up over the war room. I haven't, I haven't seen the movie. The war room, whatever it's called. Facebook blew up over the passion of Christ. And everybody's like, I, I, I got my war room. I got this, and I got this, and I have a passion for Calvary. And, and, and Hollywood stimulated people's walk with God. That's sad. Hollywood, or as preachers call it, Hollywood. We just, A-E-I-O-U sometimes, why? We just change the vowel out, you know? Hollywood. Stimulated people's, and I told my wife, I said, you know what? I'm never going to see that movie. I've never saw Passion of Christ. I've never saw The War Room. I probably never will see it. Because if I can't have, blessed are those that mourn. If I can't, if I didn't have that before, I watched a motion picture film. I'm not going to have it when the movie wears off on my life. The only way I'm going to have that kind of a prayer life is if Jesus still has an effect on my life. The only way you're going to be able to have that blessed are those that mourn, amen, you are, 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 are going to have to allow Jesus, amen, to have constant effect on your life, amen, when you pray, if God speaks to you, uh, or when God speaks to you, sometimes you pray and it doesn't feel like God hears you, but when you get into that presence of God and you begin to mourn and you begin to groan and utterings come out in the Holy Ghost, uh, those are the times when you begin begin to press through. I, I'm telling you, I, I had a war room before the war room was ever put out on the motion picture film. I had a passion for Christ. Amen. Before there ever was a movie about a passion for Christ. I'm here to remind somebody. Amen. The blood will never lose its power. And I know that when I'm going through things in my life that I can find a place in Jesus. Despite what's going on in my life, I know from a little boy, I can still hear the prayers of my mother when I was a little boy, and I can still hear the prayers of my grandfather when he was out in that building, when he was at his wit's end. God, how is this going to happen? Blessed are those that mourn. Having godly sorrow and being able to be broken for God is something that the devil fears. We're living in a time, and I, I'm trying to not to go off course. My mind is just, it's like a steam engine. It's trying to go a certain way right now. We're living in a time where everybody wants to be I was talking to Brother Wahlberg's dad on the phone the other day. Um, and he, and he, he, he told me, I believe he don't mind me saying this. He said, Pastor Scott, I want 
I want, I want to be more of a prayer warrior. And I told him, I said, you know what? That's very few people ask me to help them pray. God, help me to be a prayer warrior. It's a lost art. Because everybody wants to be on the platform. Could you imagine? I, I was seeing your brother Magnus' church. Beautiful sanctuary. Thousands of people there. Could you imagine if brother Magnus to keep those people? Had to give them five or ten minutes on the platform in front of all those people. So that everybody knew that they were there. This guy right here never wanted a mic. This guy right here never wanted to be in front of people. This guy right here was fully content sitting in a pew, worshiping God and witnessing to people and praying with people. I was fully content with that. But what would happen if the church could get a hold of that and say, God, I want to become a prayer warrior? Because I believe that's where the fight is won. Cancer is healed through prayer. Amen? Sickness is healed through prayer. Spirits are cast out through prayer. So if all these happen through prayer, why would the dynamics change when it comes to your situation? Quiet, right? Prayer is the key to your victory. Prayer is the key. We have too many people blaming God for not answering. How consistent is your prayer life? We have to be broken before God. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the kingdom of God. Men have a hard time being meek, to be humble, a calm temper, a calm temper of mind is not, is, is not easily provoked. Men, most men like their alpha, they like to put their chest out and <clears throat> me, right? This is my house. I want my woman to think that I'm the best thing around. I want to make news for you. There is a lot of times where your wife is going, if he would only get off his high horse and just get some help. Can the wife say amen? Oh, my, my. Come on now. Some of y'all scared. I'm speaking truth. My wife's told me, why don't you just get some help? Just call, just call the place. They'll come out and fix it. I got this. I got this. I just found out some of y'all scared to. I just found out something right now. Men like to be strong, but meekness is not weakness. Weakness is a lack of strength or courage. Meekness is a person's conscious choice showing strength and courage during an uncomfortable situation. If you see me turn around and walk away from somebody, it's because I am not going to lower myself to where they're at. It does not mean that I'm weak and that I don't know the answer or that I, I, I don't know uh, uh, which way to walk in that certain situation. When I turn around sometimes, it's because I am not going to lower myself to the place that individual is. I'm not going to lose my integrity. I'm not going to uh, tarnish my character over somebody else losing control. When we as Christians go out in the world, and the world is trying to provoke us, amen, Christ is not wanting us to lower our standard. Well, they got in my face. I'm going to get in their face. He said, what? 
fighting gloves, come on. It's all how you handle the situation. I can't tell you how many times, I remember this, the, the most recent time, was at Food for Less, and the guy was drunk. I like going to Food for Less at late at night. I just love it. I don't take my wife there, but I like going there. Man, it's wild. If you're ever bored, go to Food for Less right before it closes. This dude was lit. And I like to make eye contact with people. It's not because I want to fight them. I just, I, I, I'm, I'm very confident. I like to make eye contact. And this guy was staring at me, so I was staring at him. That night, my wife was with me. And I had to protect her. And he kept saying, why is he staring at me? He's pointing his finger right at me. And he's wanting to fight. You can ask my wife. This really happened. And I, I'm, 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 about, I'm about from here, far away from this guy. And I could have said, boy, wait, wait till we get out in the parking lot. How dare him speak to my wife that way. But I handled the situation. I did tell my wife. I said, if he does corner me, I will put him on the ground. You dial the cops. You video record the whole thing. If he does corner me, I will put him on the ground. But I said, I'm going to handle this thing so that I don't have to lower myself to his drunken state. God gave me the words. God gave me the wisdom. And by then... He was mad at somebody else before I left Food for Less. But if I'd have kept pursuing, I would have lowered myself to a man that was drunker. And I was sober. How dare me lower myself to someone who's drunk? I have the Holy Ghost in me. I have the power to overcome. You know what? To be a real man is not just always to be the one on top. To be a real man is to be wise. I believe, I believe Solomon. That's why people came to Solomon because of his wisdom. Two moms were fighting over one baby. He said, cut the baby in half and give one half to the other and half to the other. And the real mom said, no, just give her the child. I want it to live. Through his wisdom, he found out who the real mama was. I believe we have to be wise. God wants, God wants us to be meek. Not weak. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. You must have a hunger for God. Just as your physical body hungers after food, things that sustain this natural body, our spiritual being also hungers after things to sustain it. I begin to think about the simple example of how we do it at our house, eat around a table. We eat around a table. We talk about the day, talk about what's going on. I tease my son about the girls at the high school. You know, we, it's just a constant thing that happens around my uh, uh, house, amen? And I, I'm constantly embarrassing my son. I, I just, you know what, he's going to grow up, he's going to do the same thing to his boy. My grandfather embarrassed me all the time. It made me the man who I am. <laughs> but if that has to happen for the physical, that has to happen for the spiritual. How are we going to hear from God if we don't attend church? I was listening to Brother Blizzard's message. Look out, world, here comes the church. When he preached our anniversary. And in the message, I was listening on YouTube. Thank you, Brother Price, for uploading all these vid uh, videos. I, wanted, I meant to mention that earlier. I appreciate all that you do on that. I, 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 uh, it doesn't go unnoticed. And I, I was listening to Brother Blizzard, and, 
And, and he said, you know what? I, I, he said, there, there, there's people who miss church because they have to take care of their dog. And he said, that person told him, well, you don't have a dog. And he said, you got that right. He said, but if I did have a dog, I wouldn't miss, miss church over it. There is so many things that get in the way of people's walk with God. As pastor, I see people go everywhere else except for church. How are you going to be fed spiritually if you don't sit around the table with the family? Well, I got my own prayer life. I got my own calling. I got my own this. I'm here to tell you, we all need a church. We all need to hear the word of God. We all need to hear the voices of our brothers and sisters praying for us. We all need the support. I'm here to tell you, we all need somebody to, to, to gather around the table and say, you know what, how's your day going? That's why church is so important. That's why God made it sure it was pinned in the word of God. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. Coming to church is the church family sitting around the table. Well, I haven't talked to my brothers sister in a long time amen well I'm going to ask the question when's the last time you sat around the dinner table Facebook does not take the place of church Social media does not, and they have a lot of videos you can watch uh, on, on, on Facebook. There's a lot of videos you can watch on YouTube and Twitter and uh, InstaFace and Twitter, whatever you want to call them. Amen. And, uh, but it does not take the place of sitting around the dinner table and asking each other, how is your day going? Uh, uh, it's all right to come a little early and talk to your brother. It's all right to stay a little late uh, and talk while well, I got the kids. Uh, they got to do this. You know what? My kids go to school too. I got a letter today. Today is, tomorrow is the first day of April, right? My younger two has missed three days of school in the entire school year. Three days. Tomorrow is April 1st. And I got a letter that says, from the school district, Mr. and Mrs. Scott, do you care about your kids' education? Your kids are truant. I ain't lying. I'm in the house of God. I wouldn't lie out there anyways because God could come back. Come on now. Amen. But uh, I, 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 got, I got three days, and I'm like, my God, that's the entire. When I was in high school, I ditched uh, 30 days in a semester one time. Still got an A in that class. I'm not condoning ditching school. That was first period, and I had a car. My mama's not here tonight. Come on, somebody. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I'm just being real. Amen. Uh, but, <laughs> Caleb, I got my eye on you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. But I, I, I'm trying. I'm, th th three days, and my kids are truant. What if God sent you a letter and said you've been truant? To the house of God. I don't even know why I'm on this so long. But I'm here to tell you. Amen. If three days in the entire school year. Is going to get. According to a law that California passed. I threw that communistic letter in the trash. In fact I haven't done it yet. But it's going in the trash when I get home. In fact my kids probably going to miss another day of school before it. Just because of that letter, amen? My kids have all fours and threes. My oldest son, high school education, I think my wife and I care about our kids' education. But how many of us would respond if God sent us a letter that says you've been truant to the house of God?
well, I got this. I got my job. I got this. I got my, uh, uh, I'm, I'm going after this, and I have this. And God's going to say, you know what? Forsake not. There's been a law that was passed years back that cannot be changed. Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. I, I, I don't know about you, but how am I going to have a hunger for the things of God if I'm separated from the people of God? Boy, that went over just like it just. Ain't no ring to that one right there. It just hit it and it's done. Going on. We cannot just lie down in our situations, stay home from church, and expect our life to get better. We have to feed our spiritual body. Verse number seven. I'm going on here. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. We must have compassion on the souls of others and help them. Pity the ignorant and instruct them. The careless and warn them. Those that are in the state of sin, point them in the direction of Jesus. Blessed are the merciful. Don't ever forget the pit that God drug you out of. I'm going to say that again. Don't ever forget the pit that God drug you out of. Where you can say, well, I'm better than so and so. And I'm living my life this way. And don't forget your beginning. Don't forget your trash and your garbage that God had to put up. Don't forget about that person that when you first started coming to church didn't want you there. But you remember there was another person that wanted you there. And it was because of their love and it was because of their mercy. Amen. It was because of their companionship. Amen. Don't get your eyes so focused on the negative. But look at the ones that are saying, hey, amen, I love you. I'm praying for you. Everything's going to be all right. He brought me up out of the miry clay. He's going to bring you up out of the miry clay. It's time to lock arms with our brothers and our sisters and say, hey, I'm not going to allow myself to be separated, but I'm going to allow grace and I'm going to allow mercy to be a part of my ministry. Blessed are the merciful. Many people get frustrated because they focus on the wrong thing. Focus on the right thing. And you'll have a perspective change. Verse number 8 says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. We must not lift up just clean hands, but we have to also lift up a clean heart. It says, Create within me a Clean, clean heart. David knew that if he did not get that out of his life, out of his heart, that it did not matter the riches that he had around him, that he would become just as unhappy as his predecessor, King Saul, was. And David had realized that because Saul did not take care of his heart, He lost his kingdom. Today, if you don't take care of your heart, you're going to lose everything that you've ever accomplished. Mark my words. If you never take care of the heart and you don't have a clean heart before God, a pure heart, you will lose everything that you've ever accomplished. If I'm going to go on, I'm not going to. If I don't keep my heart clean before God, I'll lose everything that God has given me. What would it what what what, what would it profit me to hold on to one thing? lose everything 
What would it profit me to follow the footsteps of my father and then live a life of regret? I know I'm not screaming and preaching tonight. I'm trying to speak to your heart tonight because if your heart's not right, you're going to lose everything. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. And I want to, I'm going to ask if a musician could come. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. The Bible says to have friends, you have to show yourself friendly, right? If you don't talk to somebody, that are you going to have a friend? One of my sons has a problem with that. And he's perfect, just like I was. If there's ever one of my kids that was like me when I was growing up, it's Caleb. Some of y'all think I was like Andrew growing up. No, I wasn't. Andrew's like how I am now. But Caleb is like how I was when I was growing up. And Caleb is perfectly happy going to the high school, walking to his classes, never talking to anybody at the high school. Am I right? You're perfectly happy with that. He comes home, does his homework, and he gets good grades in school. Nobody bothers him. He has friends that sometimes, but I'm always on him. I always say, did you talk to somebody today? When he came back from PK retreat, did you make any friends? Because, see, I had my grandpa pushing me. Blessed are the peacemakers. When you walk into a situation, if you're, if you're truly a child of God, you can walk into a situation that's out of control and bring peace into it. I believe that. I walk, when, I, when I was still worked at Porter, when I walked in, and these guys were about to go to, to a fist fight. They had their fists clenched, Brother Carly on, and they were, they were almost chest to chest. couple of the new guys that got hired I've you know I've been out at Fort Irwin for quite a while and I knew that they were good workers they just lost their temper and I was like I don't want to see these guys lose their job but God allowed me to bring some humor into that to where they forgot why they was even mad Brother Sato, the dangerous place you could ever be is between two people that are mad at each other and I put myself right in between them and I told him, I said, if you're going to hit that person, you're going to have to have, have to hit me first. And I turned around to the other one, and I said, if you're going to hit him, you're going to have to hit me first. And they all know I don't, get, don't gamble. And I said, if you guys start fighting anyways, I got five bucks on him. Then they started laughing because they, uh, they know I don't gamble. And they said, you're right. And they parted ways. They didn't get in a fight. They didn't get fired. They didn't get rode up. The boss didn't see it. I'm telling you, blessed are the peacemakers. We started Apostolic Lighthouse, and I believe this is why God wanted me to talk about this tonight. We're not going to win the fight talking about our brothers and our sisters. I'm talking to me right now, too. It's everybody. Everybody. We're not going to win the fight talking about our brothers and sisters. We're going to win the fight praying for them. 
We're going to win the fight locking arms with one another and say, you know what? God brought us to this city. We're going to win this city. Amen. The mission uh, situations are changing, but the mission is still the same. We have backsliders pouring in here. We have people, amen, receiving the Holy Ghost. We have, a, a, amen, a district that is fully behind us. I, 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 tell, I tell you what, as I was put, putting in there, I'm claiming this in Jesus' name. As I was putting in, the, in that UPCI loan information today, I claim this in Jesus' name. I said, Apostolic Lighthouse is going to become the poster church for what is, can happen if God is in control. About three of you agree with me. But I believe this church can become the poster church of what revival can have, of how revival can happen and how God can lead a church from nothing and bring it and bring about a revival. Amen. Out of a group of people that may not always agree with one another, but has learned to love one another, learn to dwell with one another, learn to pray with one another, and learn to fight one another's battles in prayer. I believe this church can become the poster church of the United Pentecostal Church International. They're already talking on a national level about what God's doing in, in, in this church. I'm here to tell you, it's not going to stop. Despite of what any grumblings or murmurs or complainings is going to go on, just like the children of Israel, amen, there was murmuring and there's complaining. They still crossed Jordan. They still went into the promised land. Amen, God had to raise up another church. I believe, Brother Sato, that's what God had to do in Barso, California. He had to raise up another church, another generation, amen, that would learn to follow him, know to love love him amen have a heart after him i don't know about you tonight but i'm excited about what god is doing in this city if we keep the right attitude if we keep the right spirit God will always be on our side. Why is that? Because if we have the attitude God wants us to be, we are the children of God. And if we're the children of God, that means God is on our side. I wonder if we could stand in this house tonight. I want, I, I, want us, I want us to pray together tonight. I love everybody in this place. Amen. From Brother Josh, Brother Wildberg, the Cadiz family, all the way up here. Amen. To my beautiful wife, Sister Scott. I love everybody in this place.